welcome to the YouTube version of One Idget's Thoughts. I'm your idget du jour, Paul Mackey. Please enjoy a visual interpretation of a podcast released last summer as part of the Dog Days of Podcasting Challenge. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Some of the graphics are of dicey quality. I think the video source I frame grabbed might have originated as a VHS from broadcast. I'm in the process of continuing the One Idget's Thoughts podcast, but have been encountering technical snags, and I'm trying these out in the meantime. Today, we're going to start with That 80s Show. Partially because I never saw it when it aired, partially because I'd like to see why it failed, if it is even all that obvious, and partially, let's be honest, because it's short. I haven't announced what my plan is after this show, but spoiler alert, it's not all failed series. I wonder how many times I will accidentally say That 70s Show, and if I'll edit them all out. I know I did more than once in yesterday's tiny episode. Okay, let's jump into One Digit's thoughts on that 80s show, The Pilot. The plot summary. On the heels of a breakup, Corey tries out life in corporate America at his dad's company. Meanwhile, his ex, Sophia, hits on his sister, Katie. Back at the record store, he finds himself butting heads with a new co-worker, Tuesday, a punk. Alright, my high point for the episode was record store owner Margaret the most unique character in my opinion. Also, the record store itself, though I wasn't really frequenting them yet in 1984, really. It cribbed a bit of the spirit from High Fidelity, but as long as it grows from there, that's not a bad thing. Uh, My low point was the San Diego setting was probably a mistake, in my opinion. One of the big selling points of that 70s show was the Middle America setting. I can see Wisconsin from my house, literally. Uh, I understand a lot of 80s culture is from the coasts, but not as many people are going to say, I remember the 80s in San Diego, aside from my friend Matt, perhaps. So, uh, who won, who lost? Uh, Corey lost, and I get the feeling the show is written for this to be the case most of the time. It's a that kind of sitcom. All right, next category, is it an anachronism? Well, Katie is enjoying a wine cooler while watching the music video for Love is a Battlefield. It didn't seem to work for me, so I did a little research, and my age at the time definitely plays into my perception of this case. In my brain, Bartles and James, or the actors they chose to portray them, started pitching their wares around 1986, and Bruno sang for Seagram's Golden Wine Coolers in 87 or so. But of course, my legal drinking days were still 10 years away in 1984. Wikipedia reports that the wine cooler began in about 1981, and a Vice article told me the Bartles and James guys actually started pitching in 1985. I'd say the one one thing that's anachronistic in this case would be the bottle she's drinking for. In 1984, the primary wine cooler would have been the California Cooler, which originated in SoCal, where the series is set. However, it was sold in a green glass with gold label, similar to an import beer of the time. The wine cooler she's drinking looks more contemporary to the late 80s or early 90s. Runners-up for this category would be Miami Vice and Where's the Beef, both of which hit in 1984, so this episode would have to thread a fairly particular needle for both of them to be relevant enough to make references about them. What worked? Well, they did a good job with the needle drops, which is a must with both the 80s setting and a record store, obviously. They had a certain slice of the 80s down just right. Why did it suck? I don't know, yet. The pilot was very piloty, for lack of a better word. It introduced the characters, gave some flavor of that aforementioned slice of the 80s, but I didn't much like the slice they chose. If anything sucked, it was the part of the 80s they chose to work with so far. One question I won't be answering is what you should eat while watching it. I'm not sure if Nutty ever watched that 80s show, but she'd be the one to answer that question. Next episode is Valentine's Day, which is partly chosen due to the series being a mid-season replacement, where this was just how things lined up. I predict that Corey will be after Tuesday, Sophia will still be after Katie, Roger and RT may possibly have one-off dates, and Margaret will comment on all of it from the side with a world-weary perspective. I'm not sure if the next episode you hear will be the second episode of that 80s show, but uh, we'll see what happens. Until then, happy hunting! 
theme music for One Idiot's Thoughts On is Too Good by Jack Bangin and is used by his generous permission. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can reach me at idiotcastpodcast at gmail.com. Don't just-